All right, good afternoon, everybody. A rainy afternoon, and a good afternoon to talk about testing. That's what we're going to focus on this afternoon, because testing is so key to our being able to reopen our economy again. Uh, backed by popular demand is Jeff Flax. Remember him, Hartford Healthcare CEO, and really proud um, of Steve Roskowski. Steve is the CEO of Quest Diagnostics. That's really important when it comes to testing and the capacity they bring here. And I'm really proud that Steve is here because he's actually a Connecticut guy. Um, grew up in Torrington, his dad's from New Britain. And Quest Diagnostics is going to help us ramp up our testing capability in a dramatic way. We have a couple of folks uh, here by Zoom as well who will also be able to answer our questions. But very quickly, in terms of the daily summary, um, Sadly, the death toll continues to grow, and it's not um, decelerating, but that is a lagging indicator. And the currently hospitalized, it goes up a little bit, but you'll find the uh, three-day trend is still headed down. Next slide, please. Uh, again, you can see that um, the hospitalization in Fairfield is, uh, is heading down again. That means capacity. That means we've reached our peak in the southern part of the state. Next up is New Haven, where that is flattening out. But uh, unfortunately, you'll see that Hartford is continuing to ramp up. And um, that's where you see this uh, slight overall increase. So we're not out of the woods yet, but at least you see the progress we're making, thanks in part to social distancing. This is one that always I find interesting, because while there are ups and downs, at least you can see the three-day trend and hospitalizations um, is, is uh, one way we can tell about our capacity, one way we get a real uh, insights into infections into a regional community. Obviously, testing is going to be a lot more exact than that. And the next slide. This I find um, more relevant. This is daily admissions. The other numbers are, are net admissions and uh, discharges. So a couple of things you see here. Um, yellow is Fairfield. You can see where yellow peaked at over almost 120 admissions a day, and now it's down to less than half that if you follow that yellow line. Uh, the green line is a New Haven. You can see it peaked at a little lower amount, 80. Um, social distancing not as severe in New Haven County, and New Haven is way down now. And finally, you'll see Hartford, and Hartford, as I suggested before, is uh, continuing to ramp up. Not as high as it was, uh, say, five days ago, but still on the general upswing. And this next slide is uh, really where we want to focus. This is what our daily testing has been. Uh, you know, we've averaged on average about uh, 2,600 tests a day. You can see it goes up and down a little bit based upon uh, lab capacity, yes, but more importantly, uh, reagents and swabs and a lot of what we talked about yesterday. And this is what we're really going to focus on today. Uh, a couple of things about testing that's important. One, a very preliminary, I told you yesterday about the uh, app called How We Feel. And I, thanks to each and every, or thanks to many of you, uh, the number of folks who uh, signed on to How We Feel, that app, you can do it at Google, you can do it um, on your iPhone, is, uh, went up five times. So now we have uh, tens of thousands of folks, and we're able to get real-time information just in terms of symptoms going forward. So I urge you, tell your friends to go on that app. It's really important. We're also distributing the smart thermometers again as we speak, uh, mainly at this point the folks who are getting the discounted lunches. Uh, but most importantly, I just wanted to say this um, venture between Quest Labs and Hartford Health is just so important. What that means in terms of our being able to ramp up our testing capability to see who is infected. And um, as Steve will tell you, about 40% of the people who are infected don't even show symptoms yet. And right now, we only are able to test people who are showing symptoms, so we're missing an awful lot of the folks out there. And it's important that we be able to capture that if we're ever able to get back to work safely. And uh, right now, Jeff, you're doing, what, a few hundred tests a, a day? And this will ramp us up to 2,000 tests a day in the very near future. And it's 2,000 tests, uh, you know, right here in Hartford, but also in Norwich, in Bridgeport, New Britain. And uh, Jeff is telling me they're going to have a mobile testing facility. So we'll be able to get those uh, tests out to nursing homes and correctional facilities and homeless shelters and those places where we have the most contagion. 
And Steve has said these tests will be able to turn them around in a, uh, 24 hours. They have drivers all over the state drive that uh, test samples up to a lab in uh, Massachusetts and get that turned around. And that's just uh, incredible in terms of what that means and our ability to get this state moving again. Testing the PPE, we do have the PPE beginning to come in now. We got uh, over 100,000 uh, new N95 masks, doing those for our uh, nursing homes in particular. Two million surgical masks to make sure folks uh, who are doing food, daycare, and others, we can get that out into the working community, those essential businesses, to make sure that they're safe going forward. And if you're from a smaller business, you can't get a hold of those surgical masks because uh, 8 o'clock uh, Monday night, you know, that was when we required the masks for all people working in those businesses. You can go to our 211 hotline. We'll have that set up for you. We'll be able to deliver you those masks as well. And we have millions of gloves available. Um, you know, with that, Jeff, I'd just like to have you say a little bit about what this testing means for the state of Connecticut. And uh, please introduce our friend Steve. Thank you, Governor, uh, and thank you for your support in helping us uh, and enable this partnership to happen with Quest Diagnostics. We couldn't be more excited. Uh, this is a tremendous advancement for our capabilities across the state uh, to substantially increase our testing. Uh, the, the partnership that, that we enjoyed, Hartford Healthcare, with Quest Diagnostics was established in 2014, uh, and Quest serves as our partner in, in, in all of our outpatient facilities across Connecticut. Uh, and it's been a very strong uh, partnership that's really had great success over the last number of years. Uh, Governor, when you challenged us uh, and put a mandate in place across Connecticut for all the health systems uh, to substantially uh, increase its testing, to figure out ways to use our ingenuity, uh, to innovate, uh, we naturally approached our partner. Uh, and having Steve Ruskowski as the chairman, president, CEO of Quest uh, is an important one. We know that he, he certainly serves and has great admiration for all 50 states but we're still his only home state, uh, being born and bred uh, in, in Torrington. So uh, Steve has been an incredible leader uh, nationally, operating one of the two largest uh, commercial laboratory companies in America, uh, and has always had a very special interest in making sure that we're state-of-the-art in Connecticut. So when we approach Steve, if you look at the trailing last seven days, uh, testing in the state of Connecticut has been approximately 2,600 tests. At Hartford Healthcare, we represent 500 of those tests, so approximately 20%. Uh, As we look going forward, we're adding today, and the announcement of this partnership is a commitment to add 2,000 tests every day. So our testing capability, in fact, will go up to 2,500, uh, but the state will see in the, in the immediate term uh, an 80% increase uh, in total tests available that can be processed for the residents of the state of Connecticut. So we have enormous gratitude, uh, Governor, to you, uh, for your support into, into the partnership with Crest Laboratories. We at Hartford Healthcare in this partnership will put a 24-hour uh, service in place. It's, it's our hotline, 860-972-8100, and people can access it off our website as well, uh, where at 24 hours a day, a clinician can be accessed who will facilitate a test uh, order, or any physician in the community who provides a test order uh, or a clinician, uh, it will be honored. So we're working on making this much more accessible, uh, much more timely uh, as we go forward. Uh, and we're going to ensure not only that we operationalize uh, the first five test centers that we operate today across Connecticut, but together in this partnership, we're going to build more test centers in other parts of the state and in cities uh, to make certain that we are as accessible as possible. Uh, so this is about access to care. Uh, and it's about also how we can channel and use the tests to get all of our citizens in Connecticut to have the best care, the necessary care at the right time, in the right place, uh, with the right level of support. But as we think about returning the state to work, uh, amping up our testing capabilities is paramount. And that's why this partnership is absolutely critical uh, to our circumstances in our state today. So with that, uh, let, let me introduce the Chairman and CEO and President of Quest Diagnostics, Steve Verskowski. Well, first of all, thanks, Governor, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be back in my home state. It's a real honor. And Jeff, thanks for hosting us here today. And as you said, we're no strangers. We've been together as a partner for a number of years. And what we 
do at Quest overall is a small part of healthcare cost. Most people don't realize, but testing is around 2% of the cost of healthcare. But most healthcare decisions, and this is a glaring example of that, are very dependent upon testing information. We estimate close to 70% of the decision that's made next in healthcare is dependent upon testing. And so, unfortunately, with this crisis, we're right in the middle of testing being the center of attention. Uh, because we need that test information. And as I explained to the governor, and we're working together with Jeff, the first information is, are you, are you infected or not? And so the numbers that the governor and Jeff brought forward was to talk about those tests that we run, and I'm so proud that we are now working together to expand the capacity. In the state of Connecticut, we're doing roughly 50% of the test, these diagnostic tests to determine whether you've had the disease or not. And as Jeff described, we're going to be ramping that up we have five centers that will be able to grant, greatly improve their throughput with our capabilities and Jeff's capabilities. And then we, we at Quest Diagnostics employ about 850 people in the state of Connecticut. Um, we, we will go to these sites, we pick these uh, specimens up with our courier operation, about 180 cars running around the state of Connecticut every day. And then we bring it to our central facilities and as the governor said, we will test that you know, that specimen, and then we resulted in an electronic medical record. And so far, we've done about 26,000 of your tests for, for, for the state of Connecticut. And the next step uh, is actually to start to look at the antibodies. And people are reading today about the serological tests that we are bringing out to the marketplace that will ramp in the next several weeks. And this will also determine if you've had the disease but at the late stage of the disease, it will determine whether you have the antibodies. And there's some growing indication that that will determine you have immunity for some period of time. And that will be an interesting next step. The difference between the first test and the second test is the first test has been very difficult to administer because it needs a healthcare professional coming from the Hartford Hospital System. Uh, the second test will be a blood test, so it'll be much more pervasive, leveraging all our infrastructure we have throughout the company and the state, and allowing us to take the next step of get, really getting a handle on the virus and what it has done to uh, in, in its way of infection throughout the state of Connecticut. So with that, again, gl I'm glad to be here, Jeff, with you, and look forward to the next step of our par partnership going forward. Governor? Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we have a couple of other experts here by Zoom. If you have any questions for uh, Dr. James Carden, who's an expert on the testing procedures and specifics, and uh, Sarah Lewis, who can talk about how this testing will impact, uh, in particular, the underserved communities we have here in the state of Connecticut. And of course, uh, Josh and Paul are always hanging around for the tough questions. All right, Max. We'll start with NBC Connecticut. Hi, Governor. This is Matt Austin with NBC Connecticut and had a couple quick questions for Jeff. I was wondering if you could just tell us what the current capacity is right now of the hospital. We've heard um, a lot of increased cases here in Hartford. How are things looking right now and are we approaching capacity? And then my second question was, I know the state has had some concerns about some of the supplies to do the testing. How, where, I guess where have we found all those supplies to be able to ramp up so much? Certainly. Uh, thank you. So gl globally across Hartford HealthCare, uh, across all of our hospitals, if we look at uh, the last several days, we we've been really trailing fairly flat uh, globally. But when we look at Hartford in particular, uh, we've been going up three to five percent. So we're seeing declines in some geographies and regions in the state and increases in others. Uh, but when we look at capacity uh, in Hartford in particular, uh, we, we still have significant capacity. Uh, and we've been managing our capacity, I think, very, very effectively. Uh, so we're, we're well situated in the immediate term in terms of how we're managing uh, the existing flow of patients that we're seeing. With, with respect, let me uh, uh, speak to uh, the testing itself. And I'm going to ask Dr. Jim Carden, who's our executive vice president and a physician executive at Hartford HealthCare. Uh, Jim has the operational responsibility for overseeing our testing centers. And Jim could speak specifically about, you know, now our capacity moving to 2,500 tests. But what's most exciting uh, about this process, in fact, uh, is that, you know, this is the beginning of this partnership. So as tests change uh, and as circumstances change and new capabilities emerge, uh, part of the commitment in this partnership is that we'll be on the front uh, lines of ensuring that we're innovating here in Connecticut. So please, Dr. Carden. 
Thank you, Jeff. Um, so appreciate uh, where we've uh, come from. Uh, we have been uh, uh, able to uh, perform uh, fairly consistently about 500 tests across both our ambulatory and inpatient uh, environments uh, for the past uh, uh, several weeks. Uh, the limit there has been predominantly the uh, access to uh, uh, specimen acquisition uh, kits, uh, and that is what the commitment Quest has made, which gives us a, an ability to really expand our capacity. This test will be available to all physicians to order and all patients to access. Uh, as Jeff iterated, there's really two paths to do that. Uh, one, if a physician uh, uh, wants to uh, request a, a test for a patient, they sent a secure email to a website, I mean an email box that we will uh, uh, send out, uh, and that test will be converted into a registration and a, a schedule for them to present to one of our uh, acquisition centers to get the samples taken. The second is if a patient does not have a clinician, they can call the 24 uh, by seven uh, phone line to be connected to a clinician and get a, a referred for appropriate testing. We're expanding our time and uh, uh, capabilities at all of the current acquisition sites, uh, but we're also uh, looking for alternative sites that we could help with the drive-throughs. But importantly, this also helps us support skilled nursing facilities and congregate living areas that need testing, as well as, uh, as uh, bringing the test to the communities uh, that are often uh, have significant barriers to access and care. Thank you. We'll move along next to Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Hello, Governor. A couple of quick questions from me. Uh, number one, uh, the school situation, public schools, is May 20th still uh, the date? And when might we have an update on anything further? I guess closing possibly for the, the rest of the spring semester and two. Last night, yesterday, New York Governor Cuomo mentioned that uh, his residents could go across the border into Connecticut and use Connecticut beaches. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Any plans to close any of Connecticut's beaches? Uh, we don't have any plans to close our beaches. Um, but obviously, if they're overcrowded, we're going to have to limit the number of people who can park at those beaches. So we'll be uh, pretty strict about that. Uh, your other question was about schools. We have said uh, a couple weeks before May 20th, based upon the help we get from these gentlemen here, we're going to have a much better idea about the uh, level of toxicity and infections in our greater environment and be able to make better decisions as regards schools. I was just on the phone with uh, Governor Baker from uh, Massachusetts and Governor Sununu, Sununu from New Hampshire, and they have both deferred. Um, all classes will be remote between now and the end of the school year in those two states. But we're going to make up our mind a little bit later when we have more information. Thank you. We'll move on to CT News Junkie. Thank you. I wanted to ask, we, uh, we had two previous press conferences today uh, with the nonprofit organizations and then also with the nursing homes. And accessibility to PPE is still a problem. They know that the state is working on it. but. Um, you know, can you can you give us an update in how you guys are uh, distributing uh, the supplies that you have gotten in? Want to take that, Josh? Sure. Yeah. As the governor mentioned at the at the top, um, you know, we've received some significant deliveries in the last 24 hours. We're um, uh, definitely starting to fill our inventory and uh, distributing out to organizations that need support. Uh, as we have over the last several weeks, it's been tight as we've discussed many times, but we have been getting supplies out. We now have a significant number of additional N95s, millions of uh, surgical masks and gloves. Um, and so we do have you know, support and, and mutual aid for those organizations that need help. We're continuing to get deliveries out every day. Um, but there are still areas where there are gaps, surgical gowns, I'm sure Jeff would underscore that as well, is, a, is a, one of the real pinch points along with the swabs right now in the, in the supply chain of what we're trying to do here. So. That's a known challenge, but we have significant large orders out in that area as well. But it's good to see um, some of our PPE orders starting to come in, and that'll provide relief to a lot of the folks on the front lines that are going with, you know, short short term inventories right now. And is is twenty six hundred tests per day? Is that is that enough to come to a decision by May twentieth? So twenty six hundred tests per day is what we've averaged in the state of Connecticut over the last week. So this announcement will add significantly to that. And then we have efforts underway to dramatically increase that further, partnering with 
a wide variety of uh, healthcare organizations and other labs that we're looking to scale up. So is there a calculation of how many tests per day that we, we need right now? Yeah, so we're actually doing modeling on that with our Reopen CT uh, scientific team, um, and we hope to share some insights into that in, in the coming weeks. We'll move on next to the Waterbury Republican American. Oh, thank you, Matt. Uh, the Connecticut uh, Nonprofit Community Alliance, or I'm probably butchering the name, they brought up uh, an issue with the coordination in the distribu distribution of uh, PPE and also uh, in just their general dealings with state agencies saying that they get different guidance from different agencies and sometimes from within the same agency. Could you speak to this issue? I take that, Paul. I, 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 can, I can keep going. So, yeah, so we operate in this emergency in a unified command structure. Um, so we have a very structured process um, through which not just state agencies, but all other uh, entities, nonprofits involved in the response uh, have a, a pipeline into that unified command structure through which they can request PPE or any other type of assistance that they need. So if there's um, communication challenges, uh, we, we should definitely um, encourage them to reach out to us, but always the requests need to come in through the Unified Command. And there was also a, a concern raised on that call, while although there's been a commitment to uh, maintain grant payments to organizations that are receiving them or receiving them before, they're still up in the air about fee-for-service programs and uh, that's sort of critical to their planning in order to maintain staffing and, and service levels. Uh, anything new on that front? I'll take that. Uh, so based upon uh, your question, so, so, so you know, at the start of this crisis, uh, Office of Policy and Management under the direction of the governor released their fourth quarter payments early to all of our nonprofit providers to make sure that they had the necessary resources uh, and funding uh, to support them uh, during this crisis. Uh, we will always continue to have conversations uh, and discussions with them as it deals with the services they provide on behalf of the people of Connecticut uh, through our budgetary uh, structure. Uh, so we look forward to having continued conversations with the Alliance of Nonprofits, as well as all nonprofits in the state of Connecticut who provide essential services uh, through our budgetary uh, manner. But so that issue is still unresolved is basically the situation, right? I, w I would say the conversations have been ongoing with the Office of Policy and Management uh, as we look towards uh, the next fiscal year. Uh, but the fourth quarter payment for those uh, nonprofits have been provided and has been out the door for months. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> we'll move on next to News 8. I don't know who wants to take the question, but antibody testing. We've heard a lot about it, but are we doing it? How much are we doing? And how important is that to getting the state back up and running? Does it stay in the <laughs> bloodstream long enough? It sounds like it kind of fades out of the bloodstream. Maybe you could educate us on this. I can start, then maybe hand it over to Steve. I can tell you we have a number of our hospitals around the state that are, are doing the antibody testing right now. Uh, maybe focused on first responders, seeing those folks, see who's been infected, see who's built up the antibodies, and with the help of uh, Quest uh, Diagnostics, we'll be able to do a lot more. As the governor said earlier, uh, what we find with this, this virus, there's a, a large percentage of infected individuals that don't uh, show any symptoms, so they're asymptomatic. And what we believe will be helpful as we start to bring Connecticut back to work and bring life back to Connecticut is to be able to test more individuals to see for the broad population if they're expressing some of these antibodies. And these antibodies start to start to be measurable after a couple weeks uh, once you've been affected. Uh, but those antibodies are, are helpful and these are late stage antibodies because as the governor said, uh, we believe they're, they're will be uh, studies that will be done that are highly likely to show that those antibodies will provide some immunity for a period of time. If we look at other viruses, we've seen these with other viruses, and we're hopeful that will be the case with coronavirus as well. So just to follow up then, how, how many tests we hear uh, Dr. Carter, the state epidemiologist, saying 
we need to test the entire state, find out where we are, take the pulse. Will the antibody test help with that, or is that an impossibility? It doesn't sound like the numbers are adding up to test a huge amount of people, like hundreds of thousands of people. Or do we need to? Maybe we don't. Well, you need to do both tests. Uh, the first test and the test we're doing today in the state of Connecticut and throughout the country basically test that you have the virus or you do not have the uh, virus. It's a molecular test. The second test that's coming out broadly throughout the United States is this antibody test, sometimes referred to as a serological test. That will be a, an additional test that will be helpful to give us more insight, but you need both tests going forward. The numbers we mentioned before, the expansion of our testing, will be for those diagnostic tests. The serological test will be coming, and we added on to that number at a later point. And we are in Harvard, we're in the early stages, and we have started uh, uh, the antibody testing, uh, and we are, as the governor indicated, providing it today to first responders uh, and to frontline healthcare workers, but it, it will broaden significantly, and that's really the essence and why, why this special partnership is important, because it's going to allow us to, to go to scale uh, so that we can dramatically increase our capabilities and make it far broadly more available. We'll move on to WTIC 1080 News. Good afternoon, Governor. Kimberly Hall North in Windsor, the nursing home, 35 people dead now. Is there anything that can be done to whack companies like Genesis, which owns that facility and others, into shape? Are they going to be held legally responsible for these, these, these unconscionable losses? Um, I, I can tell you, as you heard from Josh the other day, we're going out, we're doing the inspections at each and every one of these uh, nursing homes, checking what their um, infection protocols are, making sure they have the PPE that they need, making sure that they have the training they need, making sure they have the nurses they need on site, and making sure they report um, what's going on on a very timely basis so that we have that information and families have that information. But you're right, the nursing homes have been a tragedy across the country. Just talking to my fellow governors, um, uh, nobody's solved this yet. But I'm really hopeful that with the mobile testing that Jeff was talking about, we'll be able to get to these nursing homes, test them, and get a result back a lot quicker so we know who has to be quarantined. You know, in the past, it's maybe taken us three, four, five days, and that's forever with this uh, infection rate. What can the state do for these families, a lot of whom have been allegedly left in the dark? Uh, make sure that uh, they're not left in the dark. They know through total transparency um, what happened, why it happened, and uh, what, what we're doing to make sure it never happens again. We'll move along next to the Associated Press. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I had a couple of questions for Mr. Roskowski. Uh, sir, I was wondering, you're talking about having to really ramp up the amount of testing across the country that it might have to, some states might have to triple their current testing levels. Would Quest be able to ramp up its lab capacity to handle that kind of volume? And are you planning to do so? Yeah, so let me uh, bring you through the history of testing for coronavirus. Um, in the first week of March, we really got the green light uh, from the FDA to bring up our testing. And so we brought up our testing first on March 9th. And today, we're running about 50,000 tests per day. So literally over the last four to five weeks, we have ramped up our testing capacity. And as I said earlier, this is on the, on the diagnostic test, the molecular test. And we're also looking at ways we can expand the capacity beyond that 50,000 going forward as well. We're going to continue to need that molecular test to continue to diagnose and be able to treat patients and, and continue to provide surveillance in the marketplace. And then what I also mentioned is we're, we're, we're bringing to the market the serological-based test. The difference between the molecular and the first diagnostic test is that first test requires a nasal or throat swab, it requires a healthcare professional, it requires that professional to be suited up in PPE. It's much more cumbersome to get the test specimen collection done. The serological test will be blood-based, and we could then leverage all the blood-based capabilities we have in a company like Quest Diagnostics. By way of example, here in the state of Connecticut, we have about 120 patient service centers. We have 100 phlebotomists and physicians' offices. 
We have about four to five thousand, uh, four to five hundred phlebotomists throughout the state, and then we have partners like Harford Healthcare that provide the capabilities of drawing that blood specimen to do the serological test. In that test, because of that capability, will be 4x the capacity that you see on the molecular test. So by mid-May, we'll be doing about 200,000 tests per day, or about 1.5 million per week. So the testing between both the diagnostic test and the serological test will ramp up considerably, and we're looking at ways to expand it even beyond that. Is there a shortage of uh, reagents for those type of tests? I mean, do you have all the elements that you need for the testing, like swabs and things like that, nationwide? Yeah, we've, kept, we've um, knocked down all the different barriers of providing more capacity. So we often talk about what happens in the laboratory, which is the last step, if you will, of getting the uh, test completed. Uh, we mentioned earlier that you need to swab with these, uh, these uh, specimen collection kits. At one point, they were problematic. We've solved those problems. We now have the capacity. We've worked with the supply chain to be able to get the swabs that we need to do the testing that we talked about today. We also needed to, to protect the individuals that are doing the swabbing, so the PPE. So we talked about uh, what we needed to do to get uh, the proper protection for the healthcare workers. And then also, when we bring them into the lab, you need those reagents to run that equipment. So we've worked with all the suppliers, and we have multiple suppliers for that equipment that we run in our laboratories, and they're working as, on this as well to bring more capacity uh, for us with those reagents. So we've knocked down all the different barriers of expanding capacity literally in the last four to five weeks. And if I could just sneak one in for the governor real quick. Uh, governor, you had mentioned that the uh, testing center in New Haven was a way to try to um, test uh, minority residents, the underserved, and you had mentioned that there may be other sites like that cropping up. I don't know if you can give us an update on your efforts to try to um, make sure that minority residents are tested. Thank you. You know, the best person to answer that question is uh, Sarah Lewis. Sarah's at uh, Hartford Health, and we're really focused on making sure that when it comes to testing, we're in urban communities, diverse communities. We know that this is a virus that affects different groups in different ways. Sarah? Unmute. Unmute. Apologies. Good afternoon. Pleased to be with you to talk about the disproportionate impact that the COVID-19 virus is having on black and Hispanic populations. Um, the data that we're seeing at HEC and some of the data that we've seen from the state and how we can leverage this knowledge and data to uh, have an equitable response and an equitable recovery once the uh, pandemic recovery is underway. Um, so as Dr. Cardin mentioned earlier, we are looking forward to being able to offer more testing to everybody. Um, the data that we've seen preliminarily within HHC is that those who've been able to access testing through our clinical command center or through their own physician, um, there hasn't been much of a difference in terms of race and access to that testing. Um, that data is not entirely complete and that we do not have data for every single person who has gotten a test through us, but we are are pleased to see that um, for the data that we do have, we're not seeing huge disparities. Um, we are seeing within the people that we have tested that there is a disproportionate uh, rate of positive cases among African Americans in Connecticut who have tested through us. So that does trend with the state's data. Um, we don't have enough data to comment on other racial or ethnic groups at this time, um, but we do we are able to comment on that. Um, when it comes to the testing capacity that we're increasing currently, anybody can call our 800 number or our 860 number um, to access that clinical command center any time of day. And even if they don't need testing, but they need clinical guidance, they need advice, they need counseling, they can get that through our trained and skilled experts. And that's important to us as we reach out um, and make the information and the knowledge about this virus available to everybody who needs it. Yeah, I would, this is Jeff Lax. I would underscore what Sarah just said and, and her capacity as our Vice President for Health Equity. She, she's helping lead this effort, but this is about access. And it's about access, uh, and, and we're running a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week service purposely uh, because you never know when somebody feels the need, has anxiety, uh, onset of whatever the symptom may be. Uh, but for whatever the purpose, they need to be able to access clinicians and providers. And it may be access to testing, it may be access to behavioral health services, it may be access uh, uh, to, to physical care or to hospital level care, which we've seen in a number of instances uh, through this center. 
uh, but the, the, the goal for us at the state level has to be about making all services from testing to, to care accessible to everybody under every circumstance. And I'm certain all the health systems across Connecticut, based on the task force the governor uh, has put in place, uh, which I help co-chair, uh, that's, that's what we're working on. And we're working on it every day, uh, working with people like Sarah Lewis to ensure that uh, under the mandate we've really set forth in the state is we have to improve access. It's absolutely necessary. We'll move on next to the Hartford Current. Hi, Governor. Um, as we talk about the peak in Connecticut potentially having already passed or being this week, um, can you just give people a broad sense of what the backside of this curve is going to look like? I mean, do we expect it to follow a similar trajectory to the front end, or could it kind of stretch on, on longer than sort of the upswing did? Uh, we're going to find out. Uh, but we do know that social distancing greatly impacts the nature of that surge, flattens the curve. Uh, our great goal is to make sure that we get people back to work as quickly as we can, as safely as we can, not risking the possibility of a second uh, surge. We're seeing that in India. We're seeing that in Singapore. So we're going to be very careful about that. So you're asking whether this goes on for two months or four months, and what's the nature of the social distancing? You know, we're going to um, figure that out. That's part of what the reopened Connecticut team is uh, thinking about. You know, I want the younger people to be able to get back to work safely as soon as we possibly can. I'm afraid some of the older folks are going to have to uh, social distance a little longer just to play it safe. And so similarly, when you start to think about reopening businesses, do you anticipate that there will be some kind of gradations to that, like there were when things closed down, where some businesses will open earlier than others, um, et cetera? I do. Uh, we'll focus, first of all, on those essential businesses, those critical businesses, uh, some of which, uh, you know, never close down, like uh, the manufacturing, and make sure that with gowns and testing, they can do that safer, or masks and testing, they can do that safer. Same goes for the food service workers and some of the other essentials. And from there, we'll continue to open up those uh, stores and businesses where you can do it safely, where there's not a lot of close interaction within people, where you're likely to be able to uh, spread the disease. And then following um, uh, the president's um, guidelines, I think you'll probably see some non-essential businesses, perhaps bars, perhaps big rock, rock concerts, take a little bit longer because there it's tougher to protect people. Thank you. We'll move along next to Hearst, Connecticut Media. Hi, Governor. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, thanks. Now that Sue and Christine and Paul asked all my questions, uh, let me ask you, are you going to prioritize people you would like to see tested then if you're going to get up to 1.5 million by mid-May? Is there a plan along those lines? Uh, I think, as you heard from the experts here, um, we're going to start doing randomized testing, not just people that show symptoms, which is what we prioritized to date, but have a broader base. And to your other question, how do you prioritize those folks? I think we'll focus a little bit on those critical industries where I said we got to keep them going, in many cases by law, like uh, the defense industries, and make sure those are the folks that get tested and know they can go to work safely without a risk of uh, reinfecting any of their peers out there. So that sounds like you're going to come up with some kind of schedule then over the next uh, X weeks then. And the schedule will be in part dictated by these gentlemen to tell much, how much testing we can do. If we can ramp that up fast, and as you heard Josh say, we have other um, you know, labs and hospitals here in the state who are talking about also increasing their testing capacity a lot. We could increase our testing capacity by maybe 10 times over the next month or so. That would dramatically improve and accelerate our ability to get back to work. Um, and with 20,000 cases, does anybody know if there has been a case of a relapse? Everybody, uh, you know, you talk about the immunity uh, that's expected in a, in a virus like this, but has, it, has there been a relapse? Have there been relapses? I don't know. Dr. Cardin, do you have any anybody? insights on the uh, relapse? or? Sure. Uh, thankfully, uh, at least to date, they've been uh, fairly uh, infrequent, uh, not non-existent, but infrequent. Um, uh, but uh, certainly we're still uh, we still don't know how long uh, if there is an immunity and that's still to be uh, defined, how long that would last. So uh, more work to be done. Thanks. Knock on wood. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, Ken. We'll move on next to the Connecticut Mirror. 
a couple of questions on the antibody testing. Uh, one is uh, sort of a routine one, which is uh, we've seen the how these um, the molecular tests are done, the very extensive PPEs that are required, face shields, gowns, and whatnot. Um, what will be the protocol for people drawing blood to do the antibody test? Should, uh, Dr. Carter, you want to speak to that, the protocol for antibody blood testing? Sure. Uh, uh, so uh, it doesn't require um, uh, the risk when we do the uh, uh, nasal swabs is that the potential for aerosolized virus at that time, because we're testing actually for active virus, um, we still need to uh, adequately protect because having an antibody or having had the disease does not mean we exactly know whether you're still infectious, you could spread the infectious. So for the protection of both the workers and the patients, mask wearing and other uh, uh, basic sort of steps needs to be taken. But because it's a blood sample, there's no risk for aerosolized virus during that so that the degree of protection is not as robust. Is that a, is that a finger prick or is that more extensive uh, blood draw? Uh, right now it would be a usual uh, blood test like you would if you were having your cholesterol drawn or regular labs done. And given the questions that are still out there about uh, how, how long immunity will last, who gets immunity, um, can the governor or anybody else in the administration give us a better sense of how the antibody testing will fit into the reopen Connecticut uh, process? I mean, and there, there are, I guess another way of asking it is, what are the limits as to what this will tell you as far as what is safe to reopen? Um, I would think that the antibody testing could tell us a couple of things. One, how many people have been infected? And two, um, of those folks who have been infected, how many have built up the antibodies that gives them some level of uh, immunity? Uh, how much of that would uh, affect our ability to uh, get people back to work sooner and safer? I have a feeling that the uh, PCR testing is going to be a little more indicative of that. We can broaden that out quicker and make sure we know people going to work aren't infected or those who are infected or quarantined don't infect other people. So will the antibody testing really be more about the safety of an individual to return to work as opposed to making broader decisions? Either you want to have insights sure. into that? Until we do the testing, we really don't know. And as uh, the doctor shared, uh, two parts of this antibody test. Um, we, we still do not have the evidence to say it is absolutely certain that it provides immunity. Uh, past viruses have, so therefore we're hopeful. Um, and the FDA has provided guidance that said exactly that. It's likely, but it's not proven yet. And that's why we need to do more of it to get the evidence to show that, in fact, it provides immunity. Second is for how long and for how long. So um, what we have indicated, the least immunity that has been seen in other viruses is somewhere in the neighborhood of less, you know, about six months or so, even more in some cases. So getting that evidence is helpful for us to determine how that will help us turn back on workforces and turn back on states like Connecticut. Six months Thank ain't you. bad if we have a vaccine coming in a year, but anything else, Paz? We'll Thank you, sir. We'll move on next to Connecticut Public Media. Thank you. Uh, today, the National Guard set up beds at Central Connecticut State University for recovering COVID-19 patients in the area. Um, I'm wondering if someone could remind me where else the Guard has set up these recovery sites and if any of those sites have been used so far. Yeah, I'm happy to take that. So the Guard has assisted set up of surge capacity at the Connecticut Convention Center, uh, Southern Connecticut State University at the Moore Field House where the governor was uh, several weeks ago. Uh, Western Connecticut State University, um, and also at uh, the uh, formerly closed Stanford Hospital. Um, that the latter of those uh, sites, the Stanford Hospital, is the only one that has actually received some patients at this point and is helping to support the surge in, in Lower Fairfield County. And so, going forward, what's the plan for these beds? Will they stay in place in case there's any uh, reemergence in the future? Yeah, we haven't decided yet about what the future will be. As the governor mentioned earlier, we're still watching the trend lines and we'll evaluate as we go. We'll move on Thanks. to Boceto Media. Hi, good afternoon. 
Uh, we have heard that the partnership between Quest Diagnosis and Health for Healthcare will perform tests to all communities, but there is a, also a forgotten community that is vulnerable, uh, which is the uh, undocumented community. Uh, in Hartford, Bridgeport, and in New Haven, uh, these cities are the, the ones that have a high concentration of immigrants that are undocumented and also the most affected by the pandemic and we see it daily with the numbers um, how can the partnership will assist this community which is forgotten and vulnerable as well and how can you reassure them that it will be part of this safety measurement uh, with no uh, other uh, actions taken against their presence in Connecticut thank you you want to start with that, Sarah? That was about the undocumented? Yes. yes. Thank you, Thank for, you that for that question. question. And yeah. I think it's really important that we talk about the risks being faced by our undocumented community members right now, uh, many of whom may be afraid to seek treatment due to their status, and many of whom likely have jobs that expose them to the virus at a rate that others who are sheltering in place and working from home are not exposed to it. Um, so through our clinical command center, um, anybody can call and ask for testing and talk about their symptoms. Um, it's not a place of judgment, it's a place of getting care. And it's about access for that for the people who need the care um, that that they're looking for. So um, we we encourage everyone to reach out to us through that um, through that number and, and access the the skilled and trained individuals who who uh, populate that line every day. Thanks, Sarah. We'll move on next to the day of New London. The Day of New London. Fox 61. Zania Maldonado, Fox 61. In terms of the mobile testing facilities, is there a time frame for when those will be out on the roads? How many are there? And what's the number of tests they'll be able to do per day? Got that, Jeff? We don't have the specifics on that information. Uh, you know, the important thing first is that we stand up this testing. You know, moving the state from 2,600 tests to over 4,600 is an essential, you know, task at hand. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extend our hours, we're going to extend our capacity, uh, and we're going to ensure that we can do 20, you know, for, for within Harvard Healthcare alone, over 2,500 tests, and with the state north of 4,600. Uh, as, as time goes forward, though, we are in discussions with Quest. Uh, and we are assessing the very answers to the questions you just asked. And it's important that we, uh, that we figure out a way to mobilize these tests, and it's important that we bring these tests to other locations. I mean, today they're sitting principally in all the hospital campuses, but I have to commend, again, the governor and the state, uh, because they are adjusting regulations that will make it permissible uh, for all the health systems in the state to now reevaluate and relocate these testing centers uh, to places that uh, may in fact be more accessible than the hospitals that they uh, themselves are. So it's an important thing to go forward. We'll have these answers soon, uh, and we hope actually next week to be discussing about uh, with specificity around how we're gonna advance these mobile test sites. And speaking of locations, Governor, you mentioned taking those to nursing homes, homeless shelters, correctional facilities. Would you consider taking these mobile facilities to specific urban communities that are being affected with infections at a higher rate? Um, the answer to that is, um, of course. But more importantly, um, we've got an RFP out in the street. That's a request for a proposal. So we can have not-for-profits and others in those communities there being able to take the test. So you don't have to come to us to get the test. We're going to come to you. And I think we'll have a better answer for you on that within a week. And finally, last week, Kurt Wesley mentioned the Department of Labor has been running a number of tests using that new technical fix that would make a huge dent in unemployment claims. Has that technical fix officially launched, or are they still doing tests? No, that, that is launched. I think he has um, answered uh, 85, 90 percent of those claims. I think he said there's still some out there. Many of them are duplicates and the such. So. That is working. It's holding up. That plus a lot of uh, people power he, he had to bring to the table. So I think we can say with some good conscience that we've almost got that fixed, except for the freelancers who, you, as you know, take a, a different system, and that's going to take us a little bit longer. Well, 
Thank we'll you. move along next to News 12 Connecticut. Hi, Governor. Uh, two questions. Uh, first, uh, last week you extended um, uh, as assistance to and relief to uh, renters, uh, but that executive order only covered residential renters. We're hearing from small businesses who, who say their landlords are starting to harass them, threaten them with eviction. Um, was there a reason that commercial tenants were not included, and is there any thought about adding them? Well, let, let me think about that, John. But uh, I thought, first of all, with PPP, the pro program coming out of the federal government, 18,000 loans already here in Connecticut, that does cover rent. I thought about the fact that we've said no to any evictions, at least over the next uh, two or three months, so that would give some level of protection to those uh, same tenants on the commercial side, not just the residential side. Uh, but if we have to do better, we'll, ta we'll take a look at that. Look, let me just wrap up by saying um, this virus is incredibly complex. We're learning about it every day, highly infectious. First we've ever um, seen of something of this scale worldwide. But I want you to have a little bit of confidence uh, that um, your state in its taking a village is working on this in a serious way. You know, Steve, we're so proud that you're here. You know, the greatest diagnostic testing company in the world, as far as I'm concerned, especially given the fact they're here. And uh, what that means in terms of our scale, you know, working with Jeff, working with our amazing health care system, we never tapped out. We always had enough capacity to take care of people. And uh, Sarah and Jim, thank you for making sure that uh, everybody's going to get access to this uh, quality health care, because it doesn't work unless it's access for all. Thanks, everybody.